Hey guys, this is Flix bringing you the day three results of my grinding it up challenge. And what can I say? I'm running insanely hot. You can see that from the results. I'm already at 40 bucks profit, which is equal to 20 stacks at 2NL6 max. And I've won most of that playing Zoom Poker right here 3,500 hints. And yeah, it's all I can say. It's an insanely hot run that I that I caught this morning. Um, it was a big heater and um, I tried to, to ride that heater and it, and it worked out fine. So um, something to uh, always be considering is play as long as you can play the maximum number of hours that you can put in when you're running hot because your play will get a lot better. You'll be able to make a lot more good decisions um, just by the mere fact that you're running good and that things turn out your way, this will put you in a positive mindset and a positive mindset is always healthy and good at the poker table. So yeah, it's something that happened to me this morning. And um, I've decreased the volume a little at the 2NL tables. Um, didn't win too much here, uh, but that has also to do with the fact that I'm only playing four tables and um, I'm playing four Zoom tables, which equals like 16 regular tables. So yeah, you just got to multiply um, the volume that you can play at Zoom Poker and uh, the number of spots that you see at Zoom Poker is, is going to be uh, a lot more than you actually have at the regular table. So, uh, well, it's variance after all. It's only a 6,000 hand sample, so nothing to say about this. But the good thing is I can take my first steps at 5NL. I'll probably put in a couple of 5NL shots starting from tomorrow. Um, maybe put in one table of 5NL and the rest will be 2NL. And I'll what I'll do is I'll go into the stars lobby uh, and this is a piece of advice for you guys who are taking shots. Um, it, when you're taking shots you want to make sure that you don't drop uh, more than you actually planned to drop on that shot. So what I'm going to do is at that table I'm going to go for the uh, auto uh, rebuy option here and um, I'll unclick it so um, I'll not be topping up automatically which will help me realize that once I've uh, I've uh, used up the buy-in that I that I uh, chose to spend on that shot moving up uh, it's gone and I, I won't be able to recover it and and won't be able to uh, to put in more money from my bankroll that I actually didn't plan to use. So that will prevent you from falling down too rapidly when you're taking shots. The, the you're running always running the danger of uh, losing more than you actually planned, and uh, that is something that you guys should definitely um, be aware of and try and uh, prevent yourself from um, from uh, being too ambitious. So. Uh, yeah, what can I tell you guys? Uh, I've got some boom hands that I prepared here, so let's have a look. Uh, the biggest pot that I shipped, I was actually going to show you. Uh, yeah, here we go. I'm still sitting at that table. Uh, I chipped up to 13 bucks from a $2 starting stack, which is awesome. And I'm going to show you the hand um, that uh, helped me uh, chip up that nicely. So here we go. Um, opening kind of loose from the early position with 4-5 suited and get a caller in the small blind and on the cutoff I flop nothing but a gutter and a backdoor flush draw but good enough for me to put out a C bet and try and represent the ace. Um, small blind calls and we see a 6 on the turn so when he calls the flop I figure he might have an ace, he might have a flush draw, he might have a queen as well, he might have a gut shot like king jack or jack 10 and I think I can pick him off some of those hands at least and I still picked up some outs myself so I've got a little bit of more equity going my way so it's not at the end of the world if I do get called here on the turn and that's why I put out a second barrel and I still got called so at this point it's pretty. I'm pretty certain that he has an ace uh, or a, quite a strong hand uh, he might have a strong flush draw, so we'll have to wait until the river. And the river is the nice deuce, an offsuit deuce. So it's it's really one of the dream cards that could have come. And um, basically, I just go ahead and bet pretty big here, uh, three quarters of the pot. Actually, it's two thirds of the pot. And he goes ahead and check raises, and I'm thinking, well, that's that's awesome. I mean, I would have never expected that big of a race and, and that's obviously uh, an advantage of playing deep stacked but there's also a drawback of playing deep stacked like let's say 
this had been a, a co more coordinated bore texture and I would have made a straight with a flush presence on the river uh, and then this would have been a really tough spot that I would have been put into with deep stacks and, and this is something you don't necessarily want to risk when you're trying to build a bankroll so don't stay at the table you don't necessarily have to stay at tables when you when you get deep when you chip up but if you feel comfortable then you have to do it I felt comfortable so I did it um, but I wouldn't necessarily advise it to anyone and I would usually say that once you've chipped up to like let's say two binds or even more than that uh, you might also uh, want to quit the table uh, if you're not comfortable playing deep stack if you are comfortable deep stacked and if you're if you trust in your reads and you trust in your decision making uh, then that's opposite absolutely fine of course so yeah I'm, I'm basically sticking it in there and really happy uh, to see ace queen being slow played in that spot but that was just an awesome pot that I won uh, the other pot and the other tricky decision are uh, you saw the result which is kind of bad but well never mind uh, it's not a biggie um, I squeeze with kings and again we're a little bit deeper and this guy he flats and the fall comes 9-9 nine, nine tray I put out a smallish c bet because it's such a dry board and there's not much going and he just goes ahead and ships it and at first I was like oh tough situation I, I really don't want to call off like uh, nearly two buy-ins it's like uh, one and, a, and, a, and three quarters of a buy-in that I need to call off here my reads and my instincts would be would have to be on spot here um, I was thinking that he was maybe shoving uh, a flush draw at that point he might have been shoving a small pair since I bet so small I might have actually induced uh, some aggressive play like this I would never ever believe that somebody would be playing a nine like this or pocket threes so I actually think that unless he was specifically slow playing pocket aces preflop um, I'm gonna be pretty much ahead every single time here and um, I will have decent equity against his flush draws I mean his ace high flush draws if not his not flush draws are basically flipping against my hand but um, yeah this is something I have to think about I can actually it was a pretty close decision so I was deliberating calling or folding and I think both are fine actually so if you're not comfortable sticking in that much money when you're deep stacked um, that's the point when you realize that you shouldn't play deep stack so when you're not willing to make calls like this trusting your reads and your instincts because just your just because you're deep stacked and you want you have to put in more money then that's a very very um, good indicator that you probably should be quitting uh, and not playing deep at all because uh, your decision making is flawed in that instance but well my read was that he was never gonna be strong in that spot so I called it off and uh, I was happy to see pocket Queens uh, another hand I got a this is something that is very important so I three bet ace king on the button um, and the guy calls from out of position against again we're pretty deep stacked so the theme of this video is uh, playing deep stack poker um, this is something that's very important uh, you shouldn't risk too many um, too many big blinds in a situation where you just uh, where you have a draw even if you if you have the nut draw and uh, yeah here we go there is a jack on the turn which is obviously an uh, um, a bad card for my hand and he just goes ahead and ships it from up front for uh, one buy in and three quarters of a buy in so yeah this is a pretty easy fold um, I'm nowhere getting near, nowhere near uh, the odds that I need to be calling uh, I would have to specifically put him on a hand like King Queen of Diamonds which I just can't see him playing that way maybe five six of diamonds but I don't think so so he's probably gonna have a nine um, maybe a set maybe two pair uh, but most likely a nine so uh, yeah I'm always dead and I have to fold this even though it's a big draw and we have big money behind just actually because we have big money behind I have to fold this um, had we been much shallower I would have been able to make that call last hand for today from that session um, I raise it up with jack 10 behind a limper I get a decent flop uh, get donked into which I decide to call because I don't want to blow the pot on this kind of coordinated board texture um, I don't think that's a good play and I go ahead and bet this turn getting checked to and this guy ships it and this is a spot that you need to realize in a in a heads up pot 
I would be inclined to make this call because in a heads up situation I think my opponent would be capable of shoving a hand like 9-7 or 6-7 or pocket 7s, pocket 8s in that spot because he just wants to get the money in and he might try and bluff me off a hand but since it's a multi-way situation you have to give people more credit in spots like these. I actually ended up folding this hand and I'm pretty happy with uh, folds like these and you have to make folds like these. You just can't get away uh, saying to yourself, well, this is micro sticks. I'm just going to stick it in with top pair and hope for the best. This is not how it works. I mean, this is a situation that really has a unique dynamic. It's a multi-way pot, and there's two people who, f who signaled interest in this situation, and uh, one of them is check raising with the other still to act. You have to interpret this as being uh, a strong hand in a strong range. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that fold. Right, so... Um, 40 bucks, which is a nice result considering that we're only three days into the challenge. And um, I hope I will be putting in some 5NL sessions um, starting tomorrow. So, uh, again, good luck, guys, at the tables, grinding it up. Um, remember, if you're not comfortable playing deep stacked, uh, you should quit uh, after having chipped up to two or more buy ins because if you're not comfortable getting in more money than you're used to, then that's a very good indicator that you shouldn't play deep stacked or you should at least first of all learn more about your post fall play and uh, improve on your post fall play before you actually start getting your head into the deep stack dynamics and getting your head into deep stack poker so that's it for today uh see you tomorrow and uh keep grinding it up <laughs>